think if you said something that will harm children, the irony in that. A day of bomb threats creating a really chaotic Saturday in Lancaster. All of it started because of a drag queen story hour at a library. Multiple people, they were also targeted in those threats. Thank you for joining us tonight at 11. We have a lot to get to. I'm TJ Anthony. Tonight, we have all angles covered on this story, starting with CBS 21's Maxine Rose, who was there all day and shows us just exactly how it went down. Over 200 young families were expected here today at the Lancaster Public Library for a drag queen story hour. But instead, that hour turning into an all day affair fueled by back to back threats. You're safe here and that was taken away today. And that is what I am, I am really sad about. At about 1045 this morning, just over two hours before the drag queen story hour was expected to begin, Lancaster City Police confirming that a suspicious package was found inside. Their hate is shutting down blocks of a city at this point. It's just such, it's just ridiculous. Police tape wrapping around the block as many in the nearby area were told to leave. I thought, oh, okay, this will be over. We'll get the package, we'll get out, we'll move on. Uh, very naive, absolutely naive. I think the chief fireman or, or fireman came into the building and then spoke to the cashier and then they made an announcement that all of us had to evacuate House of Pizza and then he made sure to clarify that we had to like move west. Close to 1 p.m., the Lancaster City Police issuing a total evacuation order after another bomb threat was confirmed within blocks of the library. The library's executive director says they have hundreds of events just like this one for the LGBTQ community. Somehow, this one in particular striking a nerve. Not every book is for everybody, not every program is for everybody. But when you send something to a library that is meant to harm people, they don't have a choice. Now the threats eventually subdued, but the tension remaining strong in the city. They're raping the minds of little children with their uh, doctrines of devils. You know, um, nobody in their right mind would come before little kids and do those kinds of things. Like many of our story times, this was supposed to be another one of them, an opportunity for children and parents to socialize, to learn about another aspect of the world, and to, most important, instill the love of reading in, in young children. Despite the scare, Holland says she has no plans to stop hosting these kinds of events at the library, her second home. With all the hate, there was still lots and lots and lots of love and support and uplifting words given to us. Now, Lancaster City Police have not yet released the names of any possible suspects just yet, but they do say an investigation is ongoing. In Lancaster City, Maxine Rose, CBS 21 News. Thanks, Maxine, for that report. And just a few hours ago, Lancaster Mayor Diane Sirachi responded to those threats, saying that a city will hold whoever is responsible accountable for their actions. She goes on to say that a sense of fear remains for the city's LGBTQ community, saying, quote, while we respect differences in opinion and freedom of expression, the use of fear to manipulate and control our community, they will not be tolerated in Lancaster City. We will not be deterred from loving our neighbors. That includes all of them. All three Lancaster County commissioners are responding to these threats tonight. Alice Yoder expressed disappointment over both the event being canceled and the violence targeting the LGBTQ community. She says in part, quote, the words feeding the flame of that violence are just as dangerous as the threats themselves. County Commissioner Ray D'Agostino saying the threats, they were deeply distressing and they have no place in our community. Whoever is responsible and regardless of their motive for the terroristic threats, they must be identified, apprehended and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Josh Parsons, he shared a similar thought saying that threats of violence, they have no place in our debates, regardless of how people feel about the drag queen story hour. And along with the bomb threats and the suspicious package found, a disturbing email was sent out today. In the email, a group of people, they claimed they placed bombs in the homes of the organizers 
of the Drag Queen Story Hour event. That includes Tiffany Shirley, president of Lancaster Pride. She joins us live from a secure location. Tiffany, we spoke earlier. You said you were out of your home due to the threats. I mean, you have kids. Do you all feel safe? No, we don't feel safe. It's it's scary because we're out of our home because an individual or individuals made a terrifying threat on not only my family, but other individuals in the community. Tiffany, I mean, how did you find out about this email? It wasn't even sent to you. Um, the library um, showed it to me first mm -hmm. um, while we were kind of waiting for direction. Um, my head started spinning. My first priority was to make sure that the intimate threat of the community was safe and that we got all the buildings, including the building I was in, um, evacuated swiftly um, and just made sure everybody was safe. And then um, thankfully my husband got home to my kids to make sure they were safe before my husband beat the cops before to the house. But um, it, it's definitely scary. Yeah, yeah. And Tiffany, there was also a list of people listed in that email um, who they claim they put bombs in their homes. I mean, how are those people doing? Have you spoken to them? They're shaken up, um, feeling just the same way as us. We feel violated. Our homes had to be, you know, searched by bomb sniffing, sniffing dogs, and it. It's just it's just violating and scary that these people posted our addresses online and it, it, it's, it just makes you feel uneasy. Yeah, in the email, I mean, we saw it here at CBS 21. They had you all's addresses listed. Um, what about right now? Is there anything authorities are doing to really make sure that you all are safe? They are just, you know, checking in, um, making sure that we're just not letting anybody know where we are. Um, doing some extra drive-bys around the neighborhoods just to show extra presence that they are taking this seriously. And then in the future, I mean, you all host these events all the time. Is there anything that you all think you could do to maybe avoid this kind of situation? I just think ed educating our community um, and also just strengthening our relationships with um, other organizations um, so that we can, we can make these events safer. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tiffany Shirley, president of Lancaster Pride. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad that everyone in Lancaster, they made it out OK and that you all are safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.